Good morning, everyone. A very blessed day to all of you. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. As we prepare to worship the Lord, let me share this verse from Psalm 95, verses 1 to 3. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Psalm 95 can be seen as one of those what we call enthronement psalms because the focus is on God's eternal kingship. The message of Psalm 95 is that our God, the Lord, is the greatest God and the mighty King over all gods. It means that among all the so-called gods, our Lord has no rival. Not one even come close to comparison. To recognize His kingship over us is to recognize that God created us, sustains us, and blesses us. And because of that, God is worthy of all our praise and adoration. So let's come before our Heavenly Father in praise and adoration as we worship Him this morning.
Our devotion this morning focuses on Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. It reads, And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, His anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Verse 2, Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Tabera, because the place, uh, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Our devotional verse today will look at some of the disappointing and sad example and action of the Israelites towards the Lord. Israel's actions from this passage reveals to us the dangers of un ungratefulness, entitlement, pride, doubt and unbelief, and grumbling and complaining. Verse 1 again says, And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, His anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Did it ever cross your mind to ask, how could a people like the Israelites who have experienced so much of the mighty miracles and blessings of God could in the next breath become a grumbling and complaining people? See, the people of Israel quickly forget what God was doing for them, setting them free, making them a nation, and giving them a new land. In fact, the first 10 chapters of the book of Numbers addresses the structure and the formation of the Jews around the Lord's tabernacle. The tabernacle represented the place where the Lord's presence remained. And every Israelite tribe have an important role to play in relation to that movement. Unfortunately, despite the Lord's goodness, blessings, and miraculous provisions, Numbers 11 records the many ways Israel grumbled and complained to the Lord in the wilderness. Then in the succeeding chapters, 12 to 19, Israel rebelled against the Lord. And in Numbers 21 again, the complaining continued yet again during the journey. And as we see in verse 1 of Numbers 11, one day the Israelites just started complaining about their troubles, their difficulties, and hardships. But it still makes us wonder how Israel could act this way. Before their very eyes, God just defeated and humiliated Pharaoh, the most powerful man on the face of the earth, with a series of spectacular miracles and deliverance from the bondage, from their bondage in Egypt. Instead of praising and worshiping God with all of their hearts, they instead grumbled and complained against the Lord. And the reason it provoked the Lord to anger is because their complaint was not directed towards their circumstances, but to God. Their complaining wasn't rooted in their situation, but in their heart. And this resulted in a terrible judgment from God, where it said that the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. You see, expressions of ungratefulness, entitlement, unbelief, pride, grumbling, and complaining, regardless of the sufferings and challenges we face, really, it boils down to a reflection of the heart. Actually, it's easy for us to point out the faults of the Israelites and maybe that of other people. 
But if we are not careful, we can be just as guilty of the same sin. Just like them, we do complain about many things. We complain about our supervisor, our spouse, our neighbor, our co-workers, our teacher, our landlord, and many more. We complain about the weather. We complain about the high cost of living. We complain about traffic all the time. We complain if we are not served well. We complain about people who have a different view from us. We complain and blame our government for everything going on in society. I think this is an important lesson for us to learn. Being grateful and thankful is not dependent on our outward circumstances or our problems or disappointments. In fact, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18 has this to say to us. It says in verse 16, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. See, God's word exhorts us to give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances. Ungratefulness, especially fueled by forgetting or ignoring the goodness and kindness of God, could threaten our faith and even rob us of our joy in the Lord. It is therefore wise to always reflect and remember, first and foremost, the greatest love and mercy that God has shown us through Jesus Christ. Remember that God saved us, forgave us, and make us a part of His family. The mere fact that we were once sinners, separated from God, and now forgiven, and now a child of God is in itself an awesome, awesome miracle. And not only our salvation, it is also good to recall the faithfulness of God in so many situations and challenges in our lives. Remember, remember the times when God healed us, time and again, protected us and kept us from danger. Remember the times when He sustained and provided for us during our unemployment maybe or moments of lack. Remember the impossible prayer requests that we cry out to God for and He answered time and time again. This act of remembering awakens in us a grateful, thankful heart that is filled with a deep sense of gratitude that God loves us, cares for us, deeply knows us, keeps us, and sustains us. Now moving on to verse 2, it says, Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. Notice that the people cried out to Moses instead of to God. Israel could have just cried out to God directly. The problem is they lack that strong sense of relationship with God themselves. So they brought their cry to Moses instead of bringing it to the Lord. But I want you to notice something amazing. Even though God was angry with His people, yet when they cried out to Him, God stopped the plague. After Moses prayed to the Lord, it said that the fire died down. Isn't that amazing? God had an amazing history of turning from judgment when His people turned to Him, humbled themselves, turned from their sin. God always extends His grace to those who humble themselves before God. That is because God's love is constant. He will forgive when people repent and return to Him. I love how Psalms 103 verse 8 captures the very essence of the graciousness of God. It said in verse 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will He keep His anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His steadfast love towards those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does He remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear Him. For He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Finally, verse 3. It says, So the name of that place was called Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. 
You know, when Moses prayed for the people, we know that the fire was quenched. So this place was named Tabera, which literally meant burning, as a reminder of God's judgment of the complaining hearts among Israel. You know, it would have been great to say at this juncture that the people of Israel had learned their lesson the hard way. Unfortunately, in the succeeding chapters of the book of Numbers, we will continue to witness the narrative of repeated acts of grumbling and complaining. Therefore, the only safe place for us as Christians to not fall into the same trap is to move in the opposite spirit. There may be nothing we can do to change our circumstances or to change other people's behavior, but we can always change the way we respond. Instead of grumbling, we express appreciation and gratefulness. Instead of cursing, we bless. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 says this in verse 14, Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Verse 17, Repay no one evil for evil, evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Then verses 19 to 21, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, you feed him. If he is thirsty, you give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. As Christians, we know that following Jesus will mean going through life experiences with many favors and blessings, yes, but along with it, the many challenges and the ups and downs of daily life. We are not meant to ignore or deny the hardships and difficulties of life because both laughter and tears have an important place in representing our lives' experiences. They build the character of Christ in our lives and draw us closer to God. When we live a life of gratitude, appreciation, and worship to God, we can always extend love and kindness and compassion and concern for others. In fact, identifying with other people's joys and heartaches becomes an important way to express our love and concern for them. But in all this, however, we should continually draw comfort from the fact that no matter what happens, God is ultimately in control of everything. So let's conclude our morning devotion by worshiping Jesus. Oh, you make all things new, Lord. You make all things new, Lord. We're no longer
to your heart And you have turned my morning to dancing Cause that's what you do And that's who you are And you give me beautiful ashes And you You have turned my morning to dancing. That's what you do. And that's who you are. As I close, let me read Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. It says, Do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Just before I declare our benediction, let me go ahead and, and pray a prayer for every one of you. Lord, I pray for all those watching this segment today. You know who they are. You know where they are. You know their particular situations, Lord. Some of them are going through many challenges and difficulties, just like the reflection we had that Israelites had to go through. Lord, it is my prayer that you would look to them with mercy and grace and step into their situation. Lord, would you extend healing, miraculous healing, to those that are believing for healing breakthroughs, Lord God, whether for themselves or for their friends or loved ones. Lord, those that are looking for financial breakthrough, maybe a job, Lord, maybe a promotion, or, or just a breakthrough in their businesses. Lord, remember to provide all their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, for those believing for reconciliation, Lord God, I just pray that you would step into their situation and bring healing in every aspect of their lives. Thank you that you are such a good God to us. May our hearts always overflow with gratitude and thanksgiving, knowing, Lord God, that you save us purely by grace and mercy through faith in Christ. Thank you for your grace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. God bless you all.